Okay, she is back, Miss Pauline Reese. Mm-hmm. Pageant wave, pageant wave. Thank you. Curtsy, curtsy. <laughs> Are you in Doom? Uh, I am. Are you going to do some original stuff? Uh, well, you know, I could do original stuff. We had a request for a Waylon Jennings song. Is that okay? <laughs> I don't know. He's some guy. He had some songs that people liked for a while. And He's not gay. Freddie Powers. I got to do a Freddie Powers song. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, um, actually, um, Terry Jennings passed away yesterday. And so... Uh, I thought, well, that's that's an appropriate song, and uh, man, he was a great guy uh, from what I knew of him, so there's my disclaimer. <coughs> Very nice man, and as I was sitting there writing the post, my husband was driving, and I'm typing it out, and I'm, I'm really thinking about all the, you know, things that he told me and stuff, and his wife, super sweet people, and then a Waylon Jennings song came on, and I was like, oh! And Bill said, what? And I said, the radio. And he goes, yeah. I was like, it's Waylon Jennings, his dad. Hello. And he was like, oh, okay. I get it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why I love him. Actually, uh, Henley, Henley got her name. Somebody asked me how she got her name. Uh, our our 10-year-old Heidi is Heidi Skye. And our last name starts with an H. So I wanted something pretty, Heidi Sky Herbert. And um, <laughs> and so with with the next child, I was like, well, we need another H name because, you know, it'll go better with the last name. And so my husband comes home one day. He says, how about Henley? And I was like, oh, I love it, like Don Henley. And he said, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> He's a drummer. He had a band oh. for a while. <laughs> they had some hits. A few of them. I started naming off. He goes, oh, that band. The one with the, and I said, yeah, the Eagles. The bird. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's how she got her name, which, you know, being a drummer, that's perfect for her. Um, so she wanted to do this song. We'll do this real quick. We'll do the short version of this Waylon Jennings song. I'm a good-hearted woman in love with a good-timing man And I love him in spite of his wicked ways and I don't understand Through teardrops and laughter we're gonna pass through this world hand in hand Cause I'm a good-hearted woman in love with Good time and man A long time forgotten Our dreams that just fell by the way And that good life he promised Ain't what I'm living today But I never complain Of the bad times or bad things he's done no. I just talk about the good times and all of the good times to come. Sing it with me if you want to. I'm a good heart and warm boy in love with a good time and man. And I love him in spite of his wicked ways and I don't understand. Two teardrops of laughter. We're gonna pass this world hand in hand Cause I'm a good hearted woman In love with a good time and man Yes, I'm a good hearted woman In love with a good time and man Yeah, uh, I told Henley she was doing a set change like Reba, you know? I like it with her outfit. Yeah. Told her, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come out in like a big ball gown like Loretta. <laughs> Let's do a Freddie Powers song. Freddie Powers first. Freddie first. 
You know, Freddie Powers was one of my mentors, and uh, he wrote a bunch of the songs that Merle Haggard uh, released, like Chase Each Other Around the Room Tonight, Natural High, and uh, he wrote this next song that I'm going to play. And I studied with him on guitar and songwriting, and he introduced me to some of his friends, like Sonny Throckmorton and Merle and Willie, and that's how all that came about. And uh, I always give his wife, Catherine, credit because if it weren't for her accepting me into that family and being a part of that family, all this would never have happened. So, pretty cool. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> She's like, don't you cry. Um, so, uh, we lost Freddie uh, not too long ago, a few years back. And um, he always told me, he said, Darling, don't ever have pets or children on stage because they will show you up every single time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't listen. <laughs> um, so this is a song that he wrote, and George Jones made it a number one hit for him. And uh, he always wanted a female singer to record it. And he kept telling me that I always, I just heard it as a female song. And so every single time I would cut a record, I would bring it over to his house. First, I would write the songs and call Pootie, Willie Nelson's stage manager, who gave me my old Martin guitar. I would call him first. It could be 3 a.m. He'd answer the phone and go, Paulina. <laughs> I was like, Pootie, I got a song. Play it for me. You know? And so, uh, and then once I cut the record, I would take it over to Freddie and we would sit there and we would listen to the entire album and he would critique it for me and give me advice and how to promote and, and the next step and all those things. And, uh, so I can't remember which CD it is. I think it was good, bad and ugly, but I recorded this song and didn't tell him I was cutting it. And then back when we had answering machines, <laughs> and landlines and corded and phones <laughs> I'm an elder millennial <laughs> and yeah back when that was happening I would record everyone's messages so I have an entire just so many different uh, messages from people who who would call and say something and I'd purposely not answer the phone sometimes so that I'm like I don't have Willie on there I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm not, not going to answer the phone I'll call him back <laughs> you know <laughs> And, uh, and so I put Freddie's recording at the end of that record with I Always Get Lucky With You, a song right here. Had some good luck, some bad luck, and no luck, it's true. But I always get lucky. I've been turned down and turned on when the bars close it too, but I always get lucky with you. I've got two strikes against me most all of the time when it's down to just a phone call. Minus the time I've had good days and bad days When the day is all through I always get lucky with you Two strikes against me most all of the time When it's down to just a phone call Minus the dial I've had good days and bad days When 
the day is all through I always get lucky with you I always get lucky Thank you. Sorry, I'm parched. Some of this grape juice. <laughs> because it's in this kind of glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody. So I have I have an argument. Yeah, really old grape juice. I have an argument with my husband that, you know, drinking wine out of a certain type of glass, it's better if you have a more thin glass I'm telling you if it's bigger, because you can yeah you can fit more in there <laughs> and <laughs> and and so he's like oh whatever and he will drink wine out of a styrofoam cup <laughs> I just don't know I mean I went to the priest and asked if that was like grounds for annulment <laughs> you know <laughs> I said they don't even do that in the church you know, you so plastic, right? yeah, plastic only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. So maybe it creates more. I don't know. But um, you asked about my guitar. It's a 1971 Martin. And my uh, sound engineer, Fred Beach, they called him Irish. He worked for just about everyone in country music and had tons of stories which was so fun on the road because every time for seven years that we worked together every time we went on the road every day of the week at that time it was insane uh he had a different story and um he swears that he dated Emmy Lou for a while <laughs> I'm like I don't know if I believe that one but cool Fred <laughs> So he knew my appreciation of country music and the ones who came before me and the songwriters behind the song. I've always had that fascination. And um, so he would always tell me stories. And he had hepatitis C, and I let him work all the way up until a month before he passed away. So there were times when I actually hired two people. I hired Fred and another man to come on the road as my a road manager to help and when Fred would get down to work on the uh, the EQ he couldn't get back up so that guy would be like hey you need some help <laughs> so I think he he kind of knew what I was doing in a way but we kind of had this understanding of pride and so I never said anything to him you know we need this guy on the road okay <laughs> I need him to help me organize my life and so after he passed away, his wife called, and she said, Hey, uh, Fred left you some stuff, so I'd love to get together with you. And I said, Okay. So I went over there, and he collected old posters and stuff, cool stuff like on the wall behind me here. And it was all authentic. Shows that he had been the uh, sound, you know, production at those shows. And so I thought she was going to pull out a bunch of posters and she did. She gave me a few posters. She said, oh, uh, one more thing. She went to the closet and she pulled out this guitar. Yeah. And it didn't even have the buttonholes in it. It didn't have a pickup in it. It was in mint condition, 1971 Martin. I could not believe it. I was, of course I was crying. And I was like, well, I can't play it because it's perfect. <laughs> And she was like, oh, and he left you a note. And this is the best part. It said, play the son of a bitch, Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm working on it, Fred. I'm working on my willy hole. That, that sounded dirty. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you. And right over her head. It's great. Isn't it great? <laughs> One day she's going to watch this and go, Mom! <laughs> Grandma's already doing it right now. She's like, Paulina Maria 
<laughs> That's not even my middle name. That's how I know I'm in trouble. She didn't use my middle name. She just makes stuff up. That's right. It is Nicole. <laughs> See, the truth starts coming out over here. Um, okay, so we had a request for this song. And it's a rodeo song, and I love singing this song for my husband, Bill. There's a young man that I know who's ages 21. He comes from down in southern Colorado. Just out of the surface, he's looking for his fun. Someday soon, going with him someday soon. My parents, they can't stand him Cause he rides the rodeo My father says that he would leave me crying But I would follow him right down The roughest road I know Someday soon Going with him someday soon When it comes to call, my Paul ain't got a good word to say. Guess it's cause he's just as wild in his younger days. So blow you, oh, blue Nova, blow my love to me. He's riding in tonight from California. Loves his damned old rodeo as much as he loves me. Someday soon, going with him. Someday soon. When it comes to call, my boy ain't got a good word to say. Guess it's cause he's just as wild in his younger days. Riding in tonight from California Loves his damned old rodeo As much as he loves me Someday soon Going with him Someday soon Someday soon Going with him Someday Yes. Mine too. Mine too. That one in Neon Moon. Um, so when, when I first joined a band in Austin, I was 15, and I got the gig, so to speak, uh, because I was singing and uh, taking guitar lessons at the, the guitar, the music store in Round Rock, Texas. And I got a job there and I started repairing guitars and changing strings, cleaning them up and learning from a luthier. And uh, so I started taking the voice lessons upstairs from this lady and the guy who owned the store heard me sing. He was like, what? I didn't know you could sing like that. And I said, well, thanks. I mean, that's something I want to do, you know practice my Grammy speech at age five. <laughs> it's true. I have it on cassette. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, he said, well, I think you should come audition for our band because we need a female singer. And, you know, you can just start singing some harmonies and, and uh, playing some guitar and, and we'll teach you along the way. And I said, okay. He said, but the rest of the guys have to approve it. 
So I showed up at the music store for the big band rehearsal, and it was really cool because my mom had a minivan, and she dropped me off. I was like, Mom, you'll have to come in. (laughs) I got it. I got it. Okay. She was like, well, I'll just wait out here then. I was like, okay. My poor mom. She's so sweet. Put up with me all these years. And so I went in, and one of the guys looked familiar, and we started talking, and we couldn't figure out where we knew each other. It was the strangest thing. And he said, do you have any brothers or sisters? And I said, yeah, Celeste, Laura, Sherry, Ron, Joe, John. And and he goes, you're Pauline. And I said, yeah, that's what I told you earlier. You're not psychic. (laughs) And he said, well, I'm good friends with your sister Celeste. I was like, oh, my gosh, you're Greg Whitfield. (laughs) I learned how to dive backwards off your sailboat. You taught me how to do that, you know, when I was a kid. See, I couldn't couldn't do a back bend, but I can dive backwards. And uh, so after that, I was in the band, you know. (laughs) Yeah, it it was an automatic, she's in, trust me. You know, it'll all work out. And uh, she's a hard worker and comes from a good family and all this stuff. And so then my mom was like, oh, great, you're in a band. That's great with older men. (laughs) (laughs) So they made a deal that Greg and the rest of the guys would watch over me at the shows, you know, where my parents couldn't be there. (laughs) And so that was the deal. I traveled around and. Sometimes, uh, I remember the first show I had was at Club 21 in Euland, Texas. Anybody know where that is? Exactly. It's a big show. No, it no, it was a popular place at the time outside of Austin in the sticks. And uh, I remember the club owner had a chain necklace with a, he did cockfighting. So I had a rooster on it. And he wore, he was a very large man, like six foot five, and he wore overalls, and he had on this gold chain and like a V-neck shirt so you could see the chain amongst the forest. (laughs) Can you see the chain for the forest, you know? (laughs) And, uh... And I rem- it was it was such an interesting. My whole family came, of course. They always come to your first gig. Where are you tonight? Hmm? Huh? Most of you live around Dallas and Fort Worth. Shame on you. <laughs> and so, yes, that's a good one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm tired. I have a job. <laughs> and uh, so. I played that sh- that venue several different times, and it was the first time I ever tried pickled pig's feet. Ooh. Took it on a bet, of course. First time, yeah. I had to try it again later, because I was like, maybe if I just try it, no. no. Both times, it was terrible. Yeah, it's more of a texture thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the pickled eggs, that's fine. That's fine. That's old school, 1800s. I can throw down with some pickled eggs, but the pickled pig's feet is just not for me. But I'll always remember that I I ate my first pickled pig's foot there at the cockfighting bar with the bowling alley next door. (laughs) As my mom dropped me off in the minivan, hi. (laughs) I was like, I'm going to be a rock star, you guys. (laughs) So this is about those honky tonks. She's perfect at this. Uh, that that closed down all over Texas. I played just about every honky tonk there is over the last 25 years, and this was one of them. So um, Ed's River Palace over in Johnson City, Texas, and I wrote this with Freddie Powers. One less honky-tonk in Texas Another one died today They put a sign on its place And pulled the window shades And they pulled the plug on the jukebox Which song was just to die And there ain't no use in crying Cause it happens all the time People take for granted Crying in their fear 
listening to those country songs that we all want to hear. And there'll be no more two-stepping or waltzing on a wooden floor. Cause they put a sign on its place and then they lock the door. For the smokers and the jokers and the drinkers and the thinkers and the people who don't have no place to go. For the cowboys and the ladies and the boys who love to fight. There's one less honky tonk in Texas tonight. So the next time you're in Texas, or you dance to a country band. Boy, you have yourself a cold one Just remember if you can Maybe gone tomorrow So help me sing this song Let's all dance together Before the honky-tonks are gone For the smokers and the jokers And the drinkers and the thinkers And the people who don't have no place to go for the cowboys and the ladies and the boys who love to fight There's one less honky tonk in Texas tonight Yeah, we'll miss that old honky tonk on Saturday night Good job. <laughs> Thank you Thank you. Yes, we can do that. Yeah, sure. Hanley would love to sing one. Is that okay with you guys? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're going to have to trade places. How about you come over here and I sit over there? And we don't mess up the camera angles. We're going to adjust her microphone. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. There you go. <laughs> we'll have to lean can I sing too? too? Mm -hmm. Sure. So the first time she sang that song, she was two years old, and we were in uh, Colorado at the Stargazers. Um, it was like a huge dome, and it was a performance hall, and I was opening up for Michael Martin Murphy, and then I was playing in his band, and so I had the girls come out and sing that song, and it was so cute. I couldn't believe she had it memorized it, too, yeah. and then at four... <laughs> We were, um, we were playing somewhere, and, and Heidi and Henley were like, we need more songs in our set. I was like, well, I was like, these girls are getting a little too savvy. They need to go to your rodeos, Bill. Mm-hmm. Watch out. So I'm going to do a song that I wrote with Ryan Murphy and Michael Martin Murphy when we were in Red River, New Mexico. Which is another magical place. And this is on the new CD record vinyl Spotify Pandora thing. <laughs> it's called High Stakes. And my version of this is 
kind of a, well, it's totally different than Michael's. Michael's version is very bluegrass because he cut a bluegrass CD and he actually made it the title High Stakes. So you can go look it up on iTunes or online. And my version is kind of a, kind of, I don't know, Michael Mark Murphy from the 70s. <laughs> yeah, cosmic. It's a little more cosmic. And so he came into town and, and invited me to be a part of his performance in Austin. And he said, hey, did you finish your version of the song? I said, yeah. I said, did you finish yours? Yeah. So we ran out before the show started, and we were listening to each other's version. He played it, and I'm like, oh, man, that's great. He had some of the hottest Nashville pickers, you know, and Pat Flynn on the guitar. And, oh, my gosh, those guys are just my heroes. And um, it sounded great. And I was like, oh, my version's so different. I don't know if he's going <laughs> to like it. And so he's listening, and he does this this Murphy thing. Go watch him on YouTube. He does this thing where he kind of smiles, and he closes his eyes when he's listening to music. He does this. And you don't know if that's happy or like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't know if that's the suck face or the... That sounded dirty. Um, <laughs> you don't know what he's thinking, and I'm just like sweating over there. Like, is he happy? Does he like this? I don't know. And at the end, and he said, Pauline, that is just cool. <laughs> cool. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so glad you like it. And, and he said, I mean, it is just, you know, where'd you come up with that? And I said, well, is it like Michael Mark Murphy, 1971 leather pants with conchos of side cool? <laughs> and he was like, it is. And I was like, yes, that's what I was going for. <laughs> I was like, by the way, do you still have those pants? Because those were pretty awesome. I think you should bring those back. He's like, not a chance. <laughs> and there's actually a really neat picture of Ryan Murphy, his son, on stage with Michael when he was about this age. So I always remember that. And he's always encouraged me to write with my children, take them on the road. He really inspired me and encouraged that. He said, well, I have six children. I'm like, yeah, but you have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I am the wife. <laughs> Jeez. So here it is. It's called High Stakes. You're in between the earth and sky Not too low but not too high You're all alone In the unknown Don't look back and don't take stock Let it reel, let it rock You're in the zone So let it go When you're coming down the curb And you start to lose your neck Don't be scared Stop the pedal to the floor Give it just a little bit more You're almost there Oh, you're almost there You don't understand the cards you're holding And your hand starts to shake High sticks You're feeling like a fool Cause you're breaking every rule When your feet are to the fire And the flames are rushing higher And it gets hot we'll Give it all you got When they're tearing down your name Girl, don't be ashamed Don't take the blame Get in the game Cause heaven is so close and hell is there for those who wait around So don't wait around Go get up and in the fight When you know that it's right And stand your ground Yeah, go down You don't understand the cards you're holding And your hand starts to shake High sticks Feeling like a fool Cause you're breaking every rule But it feels great High stakes oh, 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 oh. You're in between the eyes 
high, not too low, but not too high. You don't understand the cards you're holding in your hand starts to shake. High stakes. You're feeling like a fool cause you're breaking every rule, but it feels great. High stakes. Yeah, ain't it great? Thank you. Thank you. I tune that one weird string real quick. There we go. All right. We're good. It's happy. <laughs> it's happy. Thank goodness. My friend said last night at our show, he said, we spend half of our time tuning guitars. I was like, imagine if we spent that time writing songs. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know, when you're a songwriter and you're a woman, it's a little bit different. And uh, men are like, ah, I don't see a difference. I'm like, the difference is, is I'm the one doing the laundry, and I figured out that my new dryer is playing Jesse's girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You open it up, it goes, dun 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 And then you shut it, and it goes, dun 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 And I'm like, I spent 20 minutes opening the door and closing it. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. She's looking at me with those eyes, and I just know it, you know. <laughs> My husband came outside, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, our dryer plays Jesse's girl. It's so perfect. He's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Because he listened to old country, old, like Ernest Tubb, you know. Or really hard rock. <laughs> yeah, like Buck Cherry, you know? So, yeah, right. So there's no in between with him. I'm like, you know, Jesse's girl. He's like, no. Uh, maybe I'll think about it. Okay, I have to play this song because, um, well, because it's the blues tune that we were talking about. And <laughs> what was your name? Bill. Bill. How convenient. That's my husband's name. I can remember that, Bill. Thank goodness. That's right. Sure can. <laughs> um, so my husband always wants me to sing this song whenever he's at a show. And I guess him being online would count. <laughs> uh, but last night, a guy brought up a napkin and said, Pauline, would you please pay, play your version of Nightlife? I was like, did my husband put you up to this? Because, <laughs> you know, some nights you just want to just kind of do your own thing and not worry about the pressure of the end of that song because, you know, it's like the national anthem. Um, so it was actually a, a fan. So I was like, oh, cool. You're my one fan. I'm buying all your liquor. <laughs> tell anyone. And Cody Canada was with us. And I was like, you didn't get a fan to request a song. And then he did later. I was like, never mind. We're one for one now. <laughs> so I, uh, I recorded this song because it just, it holds very true for me. And I think feeling the song to its core is the type of song you, you can actually relay as your own, in a sense. And uh, I recorded this with Ray Price's band and Bobby Flores did the arrangement and that man is amazingly talented he layered like five different violin parts fiddle parts for country music lovers and he used the new version that they were going to use on ray price's record his next record and i was like well he hasn't cut it yet so he's probably gonna hate me you know but at least he'll know who i am um <laughs> No, he already knew who I was because I was born in Mount Pleasant and he lived next door to my grandmother. Yeah, I used to think he was, you know, he would get out there and like mow the lawn. No kidding. And and I got really confused. I was only like seven. I was like, look at Ray Charles. <laughs> <laughs> mom, mom, Ray Charles is mowing the lawn again. She's like, it's Ray Price. I'm like, 
whatever one of them. He's famous and he does music, and I want a Grammy. So, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Why'd you put me in softball? Uh, so uh, we in, went ahead and cut this version of the song, and then Bobby sent it to Ray Price. And he said, what do you think of Pauline's version? He said, I think it's the best version I've ever heard. And I was like, oh, can I get that quote? Can I use that? Mm -hmm. Trying to get a Grammy here, people. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. Pressure's on now. Jeez. Why did I do that to myself? If you don't like it, buy the record. It's much better. <laughs> it was me like 15 years ago. When the evening sun goes down, you will find me hanging round that old nightlife. It ain't no good life, but it's my life. Many people just like me Dreaming of all used to be That old nightlife It ain't no good life But it's my life To the blues they play Hey, I said listen to what the blues are saying
Thank you. Thank you. It's the wine. It's the wine. Yes, he does. It's true. Mm-hmm. My husband uh, broke his neck in a rodeo accident. Most of you knew that. About it was over a year now. It, so it was almost two years in July. And he is 100% recovered and doing great. And uh, so, yeah, praise God for that. But I told him, I said, I should do this like that old rodeo life. <laughs> Ain't no good life. <laughs> or, you know, my wife. Ain't no good wife, but she's my wife. <laughs> that would be like the Elmer Fudd version. Yeah. <laughs> my old night wife. Oh, night wife. <laughs> yeah. If I, I always told my mom, I said, you know, they say people go crazy on desert islands. I would be perfectly fine. She said, why? Because you're already crazy. And I said, yes. <laughs> Maybe I would get sane. <laughs> Ever thought of that? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not going to happen. <laughs> so, um, I want What is your dose of Ritalin? Music. It's true, music. It is. It is. Music is therapy. And I need a lot of it. <laughs> I have t shirts made. Pauline Reese Enterprises, copyrighted. Boom. Don't even try it. Um, so this next song is a song that I wrote uh, for Michael Martin Murphy for supporting me and sticking up for me a couple of times in his career. He's uh, supported a lot of women singers because it's not fair. Mm-hmm. going to be straight up. And there will be a lot of people like, whatever, you're just not working hard enough. I'm like, mm-hmm. follow me around with the camera. Um, I have a kid on stage, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Um, so I was at a festival with him and he, I was not invited to the festival that year cause I don't know why. And so he made sure I was on stage and he made this big announcement before I walked out because it was, um, it was Larry Gatlin and Michael Mark Murphy and, uh, Bruce Robeson and they had one empty stool and he just said, I have a special guest. He didn't say who it was. And they said, sure, whatever you want, Michael. Whatever you want. And so then he did this big announcement how there weren't enough women in the country music scene here in Texas. And he said that he was going to try to fix that right now by bringing me out on stage. <gasps> Pressure's on again. <laughs> no pressure, yeah. And so I went out there. Well, I knew Bruce and I known Larry Gatlin since I was about 15. And so they're like, oh, fantastic. Pauline, yeah, okay. And so we swapped songs all night long. And I played my songs like they were number one hits on the radio, just like theirs were. (laughs) You know? That's the way to go. Yeah, yeah, that's just all bean counting stuff, okay? (laughs) It's just numbers. And and so we did that. And at the end of the night, it was uh, Larry Gatlin was supposed to finish. And he said, you know what? I've known Pauline since she was 15, and she deserves every bit of credit, just like we do. So I'm going to let her finish out the night. (sighs) And Michael was like, yeah, Larry, you're a good guy, you know? And so so this song I wrote for him, kind of with the wildfire theme going along. It's about not giving up on your dreams. In spite of all the odds. As you sleep upon your pillow While the stars shine in the sky You are rising through the willow And you feel like you can fly There's a place high in the mountains Where a horse runs free and wild Climb upon her, you travel swiftly To where dreams can come alive You 
must walk the road not taken You can't see full tears you've cried Even when your heart is breaking Riding at your run There's shadows that surround you Whispers in the night Dream catcher, she keeps on running, takes you high into the light. You must walk the road not taken. You can't see full tears you've cried, even when your heart is breaking. Ride, dream catcher, ride. Shadows that surround you Whispers in the night Dream catcher, she keeps on running Takes you high into the light You must walk the road not taken You can see full tears you cried Thank you. That's the problem with those seven strings. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Look at that. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really fun. That's, you know what? I've never seen that. And it's only the A. So somebody, yeah, message me on that. I've never seen that before. It's I'm wondering. LED, it's the LED light. No, the no, LED no, no. no. Uh-uh. Look. No, Look. Watch. Watch. Here's your E string. Watch. See how it vibrates? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That one's got Parkinson's right there. <laughs> I can say that. My dad had it. Disclaimer. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can do that. Okay. All right. That's kind of the last song, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's good, man. She's good. I'm telling you. Look out. Look out. Okay, let's do Trail to Monterey, and then we'll do that song. Okay? All right, cool. She's like, uh, what time is it? <laughs> it's late, Mom. Yeah, she's on it. So, hey, Pauline, I want to thank you again for coming and being with us tonight, too. Yeah, thank you. You know what? Come up here and say hello to everybody. Oh, no. I'm yes, sorry. because you host this whole thing. You right. and... Helen, open up your home and. Get Helen to come up. She's no, Helen's not getting up. There. Helen's. Oh God, everybody. Helen's. <laughs> Helen's all dressed up. Come on, Helen. Here they are. These are our hosts right here. He did it. He took it. I love you too. You look so nice. Why would you not come up here? <laughs> you look nicer. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. All right. So, um, so, so I wanted to point out one more time. I have to thank my sponsors because, um, you know, you guys keep me on the road and doing what I love because, like I said, I am independent and my sponsors take care of me. So, one of those is Elixir Strings. 
Bam. Yeah. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the strings, I promise. Yeah. And um, and the other one is 707 protest. That's the the property taxes I was talking about. So 707 protest, um, you can find them. I'm going to leave a link on my Facebook page for you guys to go and check it out. But like I said, it's no cost. They protest taxes on uh, your property taxes and um, and they don't charge you anything unless they save you money. So 707 protest, really cool which I save money on that. So that's why I'm like, what? What do you guys do? Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm in. And uh, and it was legit. So I will put a, a link up there for you guys to go check it out. Can I, can I put you on the spot for just a second? Yeah, no, I'm scared. I'm nervous. Was, no, no, what? the conversation that we were having, uh -huh. I was just thinking how cool it would be if you and Tish Hinojosa and Karen Mall so, okay, I don't know if everybody can hear what, what he just said, but he said it would be really cool if Kara Mall and Tish Hinojosa and I did a show right here. Yeah, yeah. That would be amazing. Did you guys like that? Oh, yeah. Is that the best You know, the cool thing about those ladies is that they inspired me, and they were always – just so wonderful and respectful of me even though they were just more advanced in everything that they did at that time you know their guitar playing songwriting and I would just come up like a puppy dog like can I learn from you <laughs> you're amazing and and I still do that to them you know and they were here two weeks ago mm -hmm. yeah. you were discussed. well props to them for being so awesome and supportive because it's hard for women to be supportive of other women because there's all the jealousies and whatnot but they were always super nice to me and uh and you know same back to them i just love them and i would love that that would be amazing yes. you and I, have talked about I would probably michael. open their show <laughs> yeah you and i have talked about michael a few times but you know if he likes the fact that people give women opportunities our whole January, our mm -hmm. February show Girl, no. is... Oh, really? Our <laughs> March show is Crystal Yates and Aubrey Lynn. Fantastic. Yeah. All women. I yeah. love it. Perfect. Perfect. And if they all get augmentation, maybe they'll get famous. <laughs> <laughs> I went back to that. See? Yeah. No, they have kids. Yeah. Doesn't have something to do with Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take you guys down to Mexico. I wrote this uh, with my friend Marcus David Kennedy. And uh, golly, that was a really long time ago. That's all I'm going to say. But it was the first number one for any female on the Texas music chart, which is really cool. But I was probably the only female out there back then. So either way, <laughs> <laughs> tip for tat. It was out there and it did well. Um, and it was because a lot of people were hiring radio pr promoters, but I got in the car and I hit every single radio station in Texas and Oklahoma twice to promote this song and get out there. Even the ones that didn't report, they're like, why are you here? We don't report to that chart. And I said, you might one day or you might move. All radio personalities are always you know, going around radio. I know this because I worked at four different radio stations in my career. <laughs> I was like, well, if I'm going to be playing music, I need to know who is going to be playing my songs. So that's what I did. So uh, this is called Trail to Monterey, which is like a modern day Marty Robbins. Here's a story known to many about a road to Mexico. It's told to every cowboy riding out of El Paso If you go below the border You can take the road by day But don't get caught at sundown on the trail The trail to Monterey Now the year was 1836 at the Alamo, where a gang 
of Texas rebels fought a war in San Antonio. Many a grave now bears the name of the dead where they lay. But the ghost of one lost hombre rides the trail. Some say that he rides for a religious fallen country. Some say that he rides for a debt he never paid. But the only souls I know, they lie in Mexico. If you can hear them, they tell a story of long ago. So beware all you renegades, outlaws, rangers too For if you ride the haunted path you'll find the story's true No one's ever seen him, no one knows his name Down below the border there's a ghost that rides the rain some say that he rides for a religious fallen country. Some say that he rides for a debt he never paid. But the only souls that I know, they lie in Mexico. You can hear them, they tell a story of long ago. Gracias. <laughs> All right, so we're going to finish off the night with one of my other mentors in the music business who was one of the greatest entertainers of all time, in my view, in my opinion, and that was Rusty Weir. And anyone who saw one of his shows <laughs> knows that uh, he was just a pure entertainer to the core. And that's always been my goal in life. I used to watch those uh, shows like the Bob Hope and uh, Phyllis Diller. <laughs> yeah, I, my mom always says, I think you're, you're, you're channeling Phyllis Diller and Aretha Franklin, you know, <laughs> with just a touch of Dolly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does sound western though like his stuff that was what turned me on to michael martin murphy yeah that kind of western thing you know that he has i always say if you're going to sing about country music you should know know something about it there's so many people who are like i sing country and i have horses on my pictures and <laughs> yeah. in, in my videos and stuff and 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 I, you know, would like to date a cowboy, but I haven't met one yet. And I, <laughs> first of all, there's a difference in cowboys and ranch cowboys. Everyone knows this. And I found this out when I was camping with my husband. So we, we took my, my Willie Nelson van, because right? it has a big queen-size bed in the back. You can take the benches and fold it into a queen-size. And we had the kids in a tent. And the morning, I woke up. I was like, hey, hey. I had to wake him up. I'm like, what's his deal? I'm like, aren't you a cowboy? Aren't you supposed to have like bacon frying on the campfire? 
that you started like an hour ago so the coals are just right and coffee and like you bring me coffee in bed and wake me up with a kiss or something like that and he goes oh uh, I'm a rodeo cowboy the Keurig's up there in the cabinet he rolls back over and says, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's why I found out the difference I was like dang I already married him. I was like, so you're not going to like mend fences or bring me coffee and bacon in bed? He's like, mm, no, not a chance. <laughs> I was like, you're kind of a rock star, aren't you? He was like, probably. I'm like, <laughs> he's that bad boy. You're like, oh, no, I have to love him. <sighs> um, <laughs> I digress. See the rabbit hole. Woo! <laughs> Pauline in Wonderland. All right, so um, per her request, we'll finish on this song, My Tiny Manager. Um, um, so I used to open shows for Rusty at Saxon Pub when I was a kid for many, many years, every uh, Thursday night. And then I had the Wednesday night slot for a long time. So I knew Rusty really, really well. <laughs> uh, knew more than I wanted to know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so... This is one of his tunes that Bonnie Raitt cut. Ready? I've been gone for so long It feels so good just to get back home Back to the people and the faces I like to see There's a rainbow in the sky a certain twinkle that's in his eye Telling me he believes in what I am What I'm gonna be What I'm gonna be Don't they make you wanna dance Don't they make you wanna smile When you're down, down, down In the country pick and sing wild Don't it feel right tonight Getting loose neath the old moonlight Getting down, getting funky, getting high, getting real Look around, everyone is a friend Every single one has found his grin So when the chorus comes around, I'll jump on in Jump on in, y'all! Don't I make it wanna dance don't it make you want to smile When you're down, down, down In the country pick and sing a while Don't it make you want to dance Don't it make you want to smile When you're down, down, down In the country pick and sing a while Alright, so every time Rusty would play if you walked into the room, he remembered everyone's name. They came to his shows, you know. He'd walk in the door and he'd be like, he would stop in the middle of a song and be like, Shh, Pauline, what are you doing here? Hey, hey, what are you doing? Come on over here. Come on, we'll sing a song, come sing with us. Come on. You know, he, <laughs> yeah, that's how he, you people know. I was like, oh my gosh. Everyone's looking at me now. And he would always pull everyone into the song, you know? So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I want you to sing this like you would sing it in your shower, but don't get naked. Here we go. Don't it make you wanna dance? Don't it make you wanna smile? When you're down, down, down. In the country pick and sing a while Don't they make you want to dance Don't they make you want to smile When you're down, down, down In the country pick and sing a mile When you're down, down, down. 
I don't know what that means, but he used to do that every time. <laughs> so you got to help me right here. When you're down, down, down. Yeah. You got it. He'd be proud. When you're down in the country, up and walks a hat to Texas at the Treadway's place. Have a little fermented grapes. <laughs> when you're down, down, down. When you're down in the country, pick a single one. It's the never ending ending. true he used to do that too Henley Sage on the percussion tonight eight years old my name is Pauline Reese thank you to Randy and Helen and every one of you for being here tonight thank you to 707 protest we'll see you next time